The outcomes framework is a way to um, both collect needs assessment and evaluation data. There are seven levels. Um, the first level is participation, which I think is fairly obvious how many people participated. The next level is satisfaction, which means are people happy uh, with the learning activity itself and did it meet their needs and expectations. The next level is learning. Learning is, uh, there are three types of learning actually. Um, learning is knowing what you're supposed to do, learning how you're supposed to do it, and when you're supposed to do it. And it usually relates to a specific kind of um, clinical activity. Uh, the next level is competence and it helps you demonstrate um, or it focuses on demonstrating what you have learned um, in the pre at the previous level. Finally, um, there's level five, which is uh, participation and uh, is performance and practice. Um, performance and practice is taking what you've learned uh, and, and actually implement it with your patients. Uh, the next level is patient health status, in which um, we determine whether or not what you've learned and what you're able to do has had any effect on the patient health status. And finally, population health is uh, incorporating all patients and all clinicians uh, and uh, trying to determine whether or not the health of the population in general has improved as a result of a series of educational activities. If you're looking at needs assessment, you start with population health and work down through um, patient health status, physician performance or clinician performance, clinician competence that's measured in the educational activity itself, and then physician learning, um, satisfaction, and participation. For assessment, um, for uh, summative assessment after the educational activity, you work from the bottom up. How many people attended? Were they satisfied? Did they learn? Did they demonstrate that they were competent? Were they able to perform in practice? Did their patients, the health status of their patients improve? And finally, in some cases, but not all, did the health of the population uh, improve? It's important because it helps focus uh, planning for learning activities. Um, we like to say that the best way to develop uh, learning activities for f clinicians is backwards planning, where you start with what the desired results are. Uh, perhaps uh, if patients have diabetes, you want their hemoglobin A1C to stay below 7.0. And so if that's your goal, then you determine, well, how we, can we measure that? And you identify the metrics that you're going to use, and then you use those metrics to plan the educational activity. So it really focuses really on the outcomes and how you can improve uh, patient care. The presentation that was made focused primarily on uh, assessing uh, physician behavior and developing activities for them based on that. A comment came from the audience where people were concerned that patients weren't involved in, that, uh, in the design of educational activities. Not so much that they should be involved in the educational activity itself, but maybe they should have their own set of learning outcomes and educational activities so that when they interact with their um, clinicians uh, that they're, they're aware of what they need to do, how to do it, um, in the same way that the clinician is aware of how, what to do and how to do it. So the combination uh, of a partnership is important between the clinician and the patient and helping the patient understand not only his or her disease, but what his or her role is and responsibilities are uh, to become uh, healthy again. It's one of the things that I'm planning to do in the next uh, couple years is to try and uh, develop a similar kind of outcomes framework for patients. Thank <laughs> you.